Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bits of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about tracing RISC-V instructions. So in the last video, we looked at a simple processor that implements a subset of the RISC-V instruction set. And just as a reminder of what that looked like, here's our very simple block diagram, or rather, it's somewhat simplified compared to supporting the full instruction set. But as you can see, it's fairly complicated, right? There's signals going all over the place that are going to change depending on which instruction that we're going to execute. So what we're going to spend some time with today is looking at the instructions that we support for this simple architecture and tracing them as they execute through each of these blocks. So which instructions do we exactly uh, support inside of this architecture? Well, we support a couple of memory instructions. So we support uh, store word and load words. So we can store things out into memory and load them from memory and into our registers. We support some arithmetic and logical operations. So something like addition, subtraction, and an or. And then we also support a branch instruction. So branch if equal. So we'll uh, go to some branch target if two values in our registers are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and start by tracing what, a, what the execution of a store word instruction looks like from a high level. Now, things of course start at our program counter. This says where we are in a program and we're at our store word instruction. So uh, starting from here on the left-hand side, we have our current instruction or rather our current PC that's pointing to a store word instruction. From there, we access that instruction from our instruction memory and we read it out of memory right here, and that's going to start setting some signals. It's going to say which, which registers we're going to access as part of our, you know, the data that we're going to store. So that's going to be one of the operands and one of the registers that's going to be part of our address calculation for our store. So the address we're going to store that data to. And we'll also have an immediate value in our instruction as part of our instruction. And that's going to be part of the address calculation as well. And our instruction will also come down here to our control, right? Because remember, our control signals, right? How we say what our architecture is going to do is based on the instruction that we're executing. So from there, we actually make the access of our registers, right? So we start reading things out and we set our control signals here. So um, for registers, right, we'll read out the two registers right here, right? One of them will go into the MUX, uh, our multiplexer that we use to select um, between. Uh, two different inputs. And then our other input just goes straight to the ALU for address calculation. Now our immediate value here will be the other input to our MUX, right? That's what we want forwarded to this ALU. And our register output here, our second register output, immediately goes here to our data memory, right? That's what we're going to be writing to our memory. We don't want to do any calculation on it. And you can see some of the uh, uh, control signals we have set. So we have our ALU up to say what we want our ALU to do and then also telling uh, our memory we want to do a write. And then we also have a signal up here that says whether or not we're doing a branch, right? And we're not in this case. So from there, we actually do our calculation. So we're calculating the address for our store, and that's going to give us our address that we're going to give to data memory. And here we just have our result from our register also being forwarded to our data memory. And then we eventually do our write. So we have our mem write uh, control signal set, we have our address and we have our data. So we do a write into memory. Now, the last thing we need to do is figure out what we're going to do next inside of our program. So like I said, this isn't a branch instruction, it's a store board instruction. So we have this AND gate up here that's used to say, you know, whether or not we have a branch. So we can go ahead and ignore this entire other side because it's not a branch instruction. So we're always going to choose this uh, program counter plus four, right? We're just going to move to the next instruction. We're not going to jump somewhere else in our program. This is just a store instruction. So we select this PC plus four, and that becomes our input to our PC stage, right? And that's roughly how a, uh, a store word instruction goes through this architecture. Now, from there, we have another instruction that we support, right? Our load word instructions. We want to load something from memory and put it inside of a register. So it starts the exact same way, right? We have to get where we are in our program, right? Our current program counter value, our PC. From there, we read out our instruction from instruction memory, which will be our load word instruction. And from here, we're going to access two registers and have an immediate, right? We're going to have one register operand, which is going to be part of our address calculation. Our immediate value 
is going to be part of our address calculation. And then we'll say which register we want to load the value from memory into, right? We're going to store um, that value we read from memory into a register. So after this stage, we go ahead and set our control signals. So here we're going to set, say, we're doing a register write, right? We're writing something into our register file, the value that we load from memory. We also set the ALU op for our address calculation, and then also that we're doing a read, right? And the fact that this is not a branch. So over here, we have our immediate value part of our address calculation, um, our register input, or rather our operand that's part of our address calculation, and that's going directly to our ALU. From there, we do our address calculation, right? So we go ahead and calculate the address and give that to our data memory. And then we actually do our read. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, minimize my screen. So you can go ahead and see that you know our mem read uh, signal is set. We have an address provided. We don't need to provide any data because we're doing a read. And the value from data memory comes out and up and over right here. That's what we read from memory. All right, let me go ahead and put my camera back on and we'll move ahead a stage. So here where we have this control signal that's going to set that we want to uh, select the value that we just read out from data memory. We don't care about what the ALU did. That was for an address calculation. So our control signal says, hey, choose the thing that came from data memory. And that's going to go back into our register file, right? And we have this uh, reg write set. So we're going to be doing a write here to the register um, that we have for our result that was set. And then of course, just like last time, this is not a branch instruction. So we go ahead and just select our current program counter plus four to be our next program counter value. So that's roughly how a load word instruction goes through. So from there, we have our arithmetic operations. And these are all um, R type instructions. So they all flow through a processor in pretty much the exact same way. The only real difference is the control signal for our ALU. So of course, we start by getting our current program counter value and accessing our instruction from instruction memory. This time, we're going to be accessing uh, three registers. So we'll have our two register inputs, right, our operands, and then the register that we want to write the result to. So say for an add, we'll add to the contents of two registers together and store it in a third register. So that's what we're specifying here. From there, we'll actually do the access of our registers, right? So we'll read out two registers. So those will come out of our register file. We'll also set our control signals. We don't have any immediate values in these R-type instructions. Um, from there, right? From this MUX, we're going to select our output from our register file. Both of our register inputs will go to our ALU and we'll perform some um, ALU operation based on whatever instruction we're executing. Maybe it's addition, maybe it's subtraction. But that result will go up here, right? It's not gonna go to data memory. It's gonna come up here to this MUX, right? We don't have mem read or mem write set, right? This isn't an address that we calculated. So from there, we're going to select the result from our ALU op, and that's going to go back into our register file, right? Based on the register that we said we want to write to. And then of course, finally, we have our PC plus four. This again, isn't a branch instruction. So we can discount all the other branch calculation that goes on here and this zero flag because branch is going to be zero. So this and is going to make sure that we're always going to select um, this, this PC counter value, current PC counter value, plus four from our multiplexer. And that goes ahead and that just is going to be our next program counter value. Okay, so those are our arithmetic instructions. Those are type instructions that we support. And from there, we get to our last instruction that we support in this architecture, right? That's going to be our conditional branch. So our branch of equal. So if the contents of two registers are equal to each other, we'll go ahead and go to a new program counter value, not necessarily PC plus four. Okay, so we start out just like every other instruction by getting our current program counter value, where we are in our program. Then we access our instruction from memory. So this is, we're accessing our branch of equal instruction. Here we'll have two register operands, right? The two registers that we wanna compare. And then also an immediate value, which is going to be part of this uh, branch target calculation. So where we want to branch to. And that, that'll go up to this ALU up here. So from here, we go ahead and read out our registers and set our control signals, right? So we're going to read our two registers that we want to compare, right? So those will be read out of here and one of them will go into our multiplexer. 
We'll also set our control signal, so the operation we want to perform. So we want to do this compare. And then also our control uh, for our branch. So this will be finally true. So we'll actually start using the zero signal here. And then we'll actually do the comparison inside of our ALU. So we're going to compare the register data and see if it's equal. Now, the typical way that we do this is by just subtracting the two values. And most of the time inside of our ALUs, we have some special uh, indicator, maybe a flag or a bit that says whether or not the result of an operation was zero. So that's what we have here as a control signal. So we have basically like a zero bit or a zero flag from our ALU. So we want to make sure that if we subtract two numbers, they're equal, uh, or rather we get zero, because that means that they're equal. So we're going to take the branch. So we're going to forward that result up here, right? And combine that with our branch. So if it's a branch and the numbers are equal, we're going to take that branch. Okay, so now that we've done this comparison and set these signals, we can get into our uh, program counter selection, right? Where are we going to next inside of a program? And we can select between our program counter plus four or this other calculation here based on our program counter, uh, our current program counter value and our immediate value from our instruction memory, right? So if our, um, if our two registers were equal, we'll select this ALU on the right here, the special program counter calculation. If the two registers aren't equal, right, we end up just selecting our program counter plus four, right? So that's how that logic works in terms of setting the next program counter value. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. It's the basics of how we kind of flow through these different registers, uh, or rather these different components, set these different flags, and how these instructions flow through um, our processor. Now, an important thing to note is that you know, while I've grayed out some of these lines, that doesn't mean that they don't exist actually at runtime. We're just highlighting the ones here that are actually being used and selected for our computations, right? Um, a lot of the lines that are grayed out, right, they still exist. They're still being set to some value, but we're, say, not selecting them from our, say, multiplexer, right? Uh, so that's just an important thing to keep in mind. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.